the Moskova 5. Oh man, it took me a while to get this camera. Um, I, I actually bought two, and one of them arrived broken, so I had to send it back. I, I bought two exactly because of that reason, because sometimes when I buy this kind of old cameras, many of them are broken and they don't tell you that they're broken and they arrive and you have to send them back. So just to make sure uh, that wasn't gonna happen, I purchased two and this one is the one that is working. Uh, you already saw it on the video, but let me show you a little bit more about it. So here it is, the Moskova 5. Uh, it, it comes with this, at least my version, comes with this really nice, uh, leather strap. I'm not really into leather as you might know, um, being a vegan and all, but uh, if that's your thing, that's great. It, it's, it's, it looks super luxurious. Uh, I'm gonna take it out so you can see the camera on the back and be able to watch it more clearly. So once it's out of the case, it looks like this. Um, you can open it, you lift it like here, and then you open it uh, hold on, like so. And that's how it looks. It comes with this mask. This is a 6x6 mask, but if you remove this, uh, it will shoot in 6x9, which is what it did on the video. Of course, you'll get less pictures, but there will be... Uh, I think they're more impressive in 6x9 than 6x6, just because the format is so big. So the Moskova 5 is a camera that I was really interested in trying, because it looks interesting, it looks weird. Uh, this is how you carry it, this is how I was carrying it, uh, while well, taking the pictures. And here's the thing that makes this camera really interesting. I mean, there are many things, but let me show you some of them. So on the top, you'll see that you can select the format if you shoot it in 6x6 or 6x9. Uh, this will actually change the viewfinder. It's kind of hard to see, but when you, when you change the format, it will slide a little mask on top of it. There you go, you, you're, you can barely see it, but you can see how it moves from one to the other. Every other camera, you will pick it like this, right? You have it on your right hand, and then you press the shutter to take the picture. But in the Moskova, this button is not the shutter. This button is just to open the camera. So how do you take a picture? Well, you take it with your left hand. Now that's something I'm not used to. I, I always use my right hand to take a picture, but with the Moskova, that's not the case. So you have to take it with your left uh, hand with your finger. Um, Another cool thing is that the rangefinder mechanism works by lifting this and now you can use the rangefinder mechanism. If this is not up, you will not be able to measure the distance. You will not be able to focus properly. So you lift this and now you advance and you get to a frame that you're needing to shoot. You cock your shutter and you take your picture. Well, you focus, of course. So once you have it all set, you just lift your camera and press the shutter. And that's it. It takes some time to get used to shoot pictures with your left hand because it's exactly the opposite of what I do with every other single camera that I have. So in that regard, it's not really comfortable. Um, but I love the format. I think it's a great format. So maybe if you can take pictures with this camera in a more calm scenario, um, maybe for a photo shoot or if you have like some kind of studio or maybe if you have a flash and you want to connect it, via um, PC Sync on this camera, you can do so by connecting it here. So it has a PC Sync port here, you connect it here, and then you connect it to your flash, and you can have uh, an interesting session outside. Uh, I would have loved to have time to try that with this camera, but I, this has to go to one of my patrons, so I don't have time to go into that. But the interesting thing is that this camera is actually based on another camera, uh, which I have it uh, over, here, hold on, actually, I might be able to find it. So the Moskova 5 is based around the size icon. They're pretty similar cameras in the same regard that you have to focus on one window and then compose with the other one. It also has this thing on top, as you can see, uh, that works for the rangefinder. The difference is the Moskova is actually flippable and for the uh, size icon, it's not, it's always there. Now these cameras, the ones that I have in my hands are not exactly the same model because the Moskova 5 is actually a 105 uh, and the lens is a f3.5 and the size icon that I have, this particular model is an 80 millimeter 2.8. So it's not the same thing, but there, there are other models of 
the size icon, uh, which are actually 105 and 3.5, which was the model that the Moscow 5 was copying. That's a really interesting thing because there are many cameras, uh, there are many Russian cameras that are actually copies from other cameras, usually size or Hasselblad or Leica's or whatever was fancy at that moment. It was like the expensive uh, thing. The Russians copied and make like their own cheap versions. These cameras are not exactly super cheap um, and they're getting really hard to find. So if you can get your hands on one of these, at least for give them a test run um, as a go for it. Another interesting thing that this camera has is this thing that requires, oh man, I feel like I'm gonna, oh, I was scared of like taking my uh, nails off. Anyway, you can use your camera and you can leave it like so. Uh, because it has this small thing that works as kind of a, uh, yeah, you can orient in a portrait position with this, making it um, somehow more manageable if you want to leave it somewhere or just put it on top of a table or some concrete construction or a window or whatever, you can leave it like so, which looks really good too. Um, there's not much to say about the camera except what I already told you. It's it's an intuitive camera, it's completely manual. Um, the shutter speeds, maybe that's that's a thing for you guys who are interested into like gear thingies. Um, the shutter speed go from bulb 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, 50, uh, 100 and 250. So 250 is the top uh, speed that this camera can give you, which for some pictures is not really fast, but it's more than enough for most of the pictures that you might be able to take. Um, and the f-stops are 3.5, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22, and 32. So if you're thinking about making long exposures, the f32 is a really good option for that. It's really easy to change the aperture and just move this thing right here. Right now it's a 3.5 and you can move it like so to any uh, value up to 32. And if you want to change the shutter speed, all you need to do is move this ring to the desired shutter speed and you're set. And you just cut the shutter and you take the picture. So overall the Moscow F5 is a great camera for, I would say, landscape photography. Um, but I also thought it was really cool to use it on the streets. Like, sure, it gives you not that many pictures per row, but, uh, I mean, this was my first try, like this was the, only, the, the first and only time I tried this camera and for being my first and only try, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, if you're up to a task and you really want to learn how to operate this camera, I think you, you're going to have a blast. This is a really fun camera to use. And due to the focal length, which is a 105, 3.5, you can get a pretty cool shallow depth of field if you shoot at 3.5. Now, none of the pictures that I took in this episode were shot at 3.5 because there was a lot of light over there. Uh, and even the shadows when it was like in between um, buildings or it was getting dark, it wasn't enough to shoot at 3.5 at, I don't know, 100 of a second or 250. So I was always shooting between f8 or f16 um around that area but if you want to for example take some night shots or when the sun is going down and take a nice portrait with a 3.5 and a 105 man this this can give you some amazing shots uh i would love to give it more than one try but now it has to go to one of my patrons um i already did the raffle for this camera so there's a lucky winner who will get this beauty um Congratulations. Also, if you want to get one of these, I said purchase. If you want to purchase, go to eBay. So yeah, that's it. If you want to join the raffle for next month, all you have to do is join Patreon and pledge $10 and you'll be part of the Patreon raffle. I give cameras away every single month and sometimes more than one camera. Uh, sometimes I send them with film and I don't know, it depends, man. It all varies, um, but it's it's been great fun. Thank you so much to all my patrons who support the channel. Uh, and thank you for watching and I hope you had enjoyed this episode even though it was kind of short and there were not many pictures but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. I have nothing else to say as always. That's, that's everything that was in my mind. If you have any questions regarding the Moscow R5 please uh, drop it in the comment section. I hope I'll be able to help you out and that's all. I see you next week with another episode and until then keep shooting guys.